Right. So this is all about volunteer recording effort. Um, and just to emphasize that, you know, that having people who can get out into the countryside and walk these sites and look at grassland is such an enormous asset because mycologists in this country are very few uh, they're too few to get everywhere so having people who can go out uh, and do this kind of screening uh, work using the app that Lucy's described is is such a fantastic resource so great to see so many people interested in getting involved today um, so yeah, this is my talk, how I forgot about butterflies and learned to love grassland fungi. Uh, it's just to give you an insight into sort of where I'm coming from. I started off as an amateur naturalist. Uh, I joined the British Mycological Society a, a bit over five years ago uh, as an amateur mycologist. Um, so I've been learning all this as I go along. Uh, and in 2015, I got my job managing Sussex Biodiversity Record Centre. So I've got a real interest in biological recording and also making data useful uh, and using data. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Uh, and a perk of getting a job at Sussex Biodiversity Record Centre, uh, which is hosted at Sussex Wildlife Trust, is I got invited out with the Sussex Wildlife Trust ecologist uh, and this uh, excellent local mycologist uh, Martin Allison uh, back in 2015. It was one of those years that was really great year for grassland fungi down where I live and they said oh do you want to come out to Ebenon Common and see some see some wax caps and I was like yeah yeah I do definitely um, and I really love this photo which I only found again recently um, because I have absolutely no idea what's going on here. Uh, Graham and Martin, I can remember, uh, discussing the features of these red mushrooms we're looking at. Are they splendid wax caps or are they crimson wax caps? And I thought, oh, I just, I've got no idea like how, the, how all these mushrooms look different. I mean, they were fantastic looking things, um, but there were all these kind of mysterious words that I didn't really understand. Um, but, I mean, look at that. You, you can't really fail to get hooked uh, when you see a, a spectacle like that. So that piqued my interest. Uh, and a few months after that, I thought, oh, I'll have a go at getting into mycology, getting into identifying fungi. Um, so I started having a go by writing this blog. Uh, and I've sort of dabbled with that on and off for the last um, few years. Um, and that is how I started getting into mycology. Uh, I joined the Sussex Fungus Group uh, and I think joining a group and going out with other people who know what they're looking at is the single most useful step you can take to, to getting more into fungi because there, there is a lot to learn and like fungi can be so cryptic uh, in their features uh, and have these kind of subtle uh, but really Im impressive kind of differences between them when you when you start learning how to observe them. Uh, so I got a lot of help from other people in Sussex Fungus Group and especially Nick Applin there. Um, and a few years later, uh, I had a chance to go along on an introduction to grassland fungi course, uh, which was run by Andy McClay from the Natural England Field Unit, who is a man who has spent a huge amount of time looking at grassland fungi. Uh, so it was a real privilege to uh, have an introduction to grassland fungi with Andy. Uh, and he started off using this very simple key, uh, one that was developed by Peter Russell. Um, and Andy was sort of making the point that you, you need to start off by getting your head around some of these particular features that wax caps have. Uh, the colours, definitely, uh, but also some of the more subtle features like the texture of the cap surface, the shape of the gills, uh, and he brought along lots of examples to show us. So that that really unlocked it for me, that kind of, when you start to understand these features, that gives you a way in. Uh, and around about the same time, uh, Natural England locally down in Sussex took the initiative to organise uh, 
a multi-year survey of some sites in the High Wheel down in Sussex. And I had a chance to go out with them. Uh, it was a big partnership thing and they were keen to involve volunteers. So I used up a load of an annual leave just hanging around with the uh, Natural England's mycologists in fields in the High Weald. It was absolutely great. Um, and I just started learning to recognise grassland fungi one mushroom at a time. And I, I don't have any clever shortcuts. I don't have any uh, sort of amazing tips about how to identify grassland fungi. The more you look at, uh, the more you really study them, the, the more you will start to recognise them when you see them. They can be really variable, but you will start to understand these features that separate one from the other. Um, and around about the same time, uh, through work, I got to go on uh, a day's training on developing FSC identikit tools. Uh, and I know we've got Malcolm on the line today as well, who's who's had some experience with these. Uh, and this a light bulb just kind of went on in my brain. I did these two things about a, a month apart. And I thought, hang on, if I put together that key that Andy showed us, uh, with this identikit tool uh, and pull in some of the information that's in the uh, book on the genus Hygrosybe, the latest edition, then I could put together one of these FSC identikits for wax caps. And then that will help me kind of fast track to the different species that I should be looking at when I find a red one or when I find a yellow one. So this was this set me off on this project of, of developing a, a wax cap ID tool, uh, and it turned out to be a lot more involved than I had a bargain for at the beginning, but a fantastic learning experience. So I had to make lots of decisions as I went along. I had to decide, well, which taxa should I include in this tool? Uh, and I decided to focus on the list of grassland wax caps uh, set out in the JNCC guidelines for the selection of triple SIs. So that's a really useful document if you're starting to get really geeky about surveying grassland fungi, uh, have a look at the JNCC guidelines because um, that really gives you an understanding of you know, what those thresholds are that Steve was talking about um, and which species concepts the guidelines recognise. Uh, I had to decide which names to use. Taxonomic names are, are changing all the time. Uh, well, not all the time, but quite often. Uh, and I decided to stick with the names in that book by David Berkman because I was developing this tool to help me use that book. So the names are older names, uh, but it also says in the tools what the what the current name is. Uh, and I had to decide which characters are in to include, and I decided just to include field characters. Uh, if I was doing it again now, I would probably develop it to include microscopic characters, because there are some species that you really do need to look at microscopic features to separate one from the other. Um, but at this stage, I was sort of more focused on identifying wax caps out in the field, and I thought I'll worry about the microscopy later. Uh, so what I had to do was codify all of that information in David Bortman's book, all of the descriptions, into a big spreadsheet. Um, and what and this is all written down. If you're interested in the kind of geeky side of how I did this, um, it's all documented in this technical note, which you can access via the tool. And I, I had uh, a lot of advice from people who know a lot more about grass and fungi than I do. Um, but what it produces is a uh, online tool that you can access through a browser. Uh, on the left hand side, you've got all the different characters that I've coded into the tool uh, and you can select. Uh, you can just select any, any ones you want. So you could just put in the color uh, and the shape of the gills uh, and it, it will sort of give you an indication of which species have those features. Um, and if you hover over the characters on the left-hand side, it gives you a little bit of help for most of them, explaining uh, what the different technical terms that the tool users mean. 
Uh, and then if you click on one of the species names in this tool, it will bring up um, some basic information. So that knowledge base tab is all of the information that's in that spreadsheet. Um, there's a images tab uh, and that includes photos. I spent quite a long time sourcing images that I was confident had been critically identified. Uh, so they were confidently images of the species that uh, is, is the name. Uh, and there's other tabs where you can bring up uh, a map of the distribution from the MBN map. Uh, and the details tab just explains where you can find a more detailed description. So it'll say in the second edition of David Bortman's book or for a couple of species, you need to look in the first edition. Um, and that again is linking back to the concepts used in the JNCC guidelines. Uh, if you are the kind of person that really likes looking at photos of mushrooms, <laughs> to uh, see how variable they can look, this was a fantastic resource for me, the uh, Danish fungus recording database, because uh, this has got loads of photos on it, but photos that have been critically identified by the guy who wrote the book. So you can be fairly confident that the sort of variability that's documented in this site matches with what the expert thinks is, is the species concepts that he's working with. Uh, and did some testing of the tool uh, and uh, caught myself out. So I found this mushroom in my local churchyard uh, and was trying out the tool on it and putting in that it was kind of whitish, I don't know, cream. Um, and just couldn't get any sense out of this tool that I just built. Uh, but actually, um, it matches more with David Bortman's description of slimy wax cap, which can sometimes be whitish. Uh, but then I put this photo up at the British Mycological Society conference, uh, and one of the mycologists from the BMS came up to me afterwards and said, oh, have you still got that mushroom? Because actually, there's an undescribed species that looks like that. Um, so there's all sorts of taxonomic fun and games going on with uh, wax caps as well. But the general feedback from the testing was that it's it's pretty good. It works, it works quite well. Uh, and I've written up a more detailed uh, overview of the feedback that I had on it over on my blog at that link there. Uh, so this is the tool. There's different ways of visualizing uh, and comparing species. You can put it on side by side comparison as well to get your head around, okay, why is this one different to this one? What are the features that separate the two? Um, and it's there and available for everyone to use uh, with the caveat that it's intended to support ID. It's not necessarily going to give you an answer uh, to species level every time. And sometimes uh, you do need to do some microscopic work to get to a confident species identification. Um, and another, when you read the uh, JNCC SSSI selection guidelines, it's got this footnote at the bottom of one of the pages. But this is this is a really key message that um, grassland fungi and wax caps in particular are going through a period of relatively rapid taxonomic change. So what that means is, as scientists are starting to sequence more collections, as they're starting to understand the genetic variability of species, they're starting to realize that what we described as species of wax caps, actually genetically are often complexes of genetically distinct species. Uh, so there's lots of work going on sorting out wax caps uh, and names may change and more species may come along uh, through the course of you getting involved in recording wax caps. So just go with it. It's exciting. It's science. <laughs>